Hi, welcome to Climbing Daily. Just to keep you up to date, we spoke to Chris Bonington yesterday and we asked him your questions, so stay tuned for the interview. On today's show, however, we've got the second part of our look at how the kit you use is designed, built and tested. We're off to wild country. We're back at the headquarters of British climbing manufacturer Wild Country and today we're finding out how they go about testing the gear that they produce. Last week we saw how the engineers at Wild Country went about conceiving, designing and developing their latest sport climbing quick draw, the Proton. Now it's time to find out if all of that work has paid off as we embark on the testing stage. Um, so initially in the laboratory, once I've got a design I'm happy with, we'll probably go to order some metal parts. So I might go to a CNC shop and say this is what I want, these are the materials I want, and then assemble all that together. And then after that we'll go to testing. So this is our tensile testing machine and, and now we're effectively just gonna, gonna break the carabiners. <laughs> Sounds like fun. So what data do you get out of the testing machine? What are we going to see on the screen here? Okay, so there's a, there's a load cell within the machine that's sort of via a series of cables goes to the computer. And it's basically going to output um, a graph in the form of kilonewtons and time. So you're going to see how the force changes over the period of time and see the maximum force at which the carabiner will break. Can we break something? I Just can't it, wait yeah. any longer. <laughs> let's, let's, let's break something. <laughs> So there's two 12mm pins in here, um, which is according to the, the standard, and, and there's a specific load rate as well at which you have to pull the carabiner apart. Okay, and the, the machine is basically going to pull in both directions until failure? Exactly that. Yeah, I can't yeah. wait for this, come on. <laughs> okay, started okay. data logging. And we're off. Oh! Let's have a look. So that's 12 kilonewtons, that's what, 1.2 tonnes-ish? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Almost three tonnes. Ooh! Glad we locked the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's pretty impressive actually, isn't it? That's quite minimal damage when you think how much force went through. It's not obliterated the no, carabiner. No, no, not at all. Generally, you'll see, you'll see as it's happened there, you know, the gate breaking. James will put the proton through a series of rigorous tests designed to analyse the force required to break the carabiner under a variety of different conditions. Right, so that's one of the carabiners done. Yep. Next stage is what? So this is how people climb on them, so to test them like this is, is the next stage for sure. With the Proton, the second part of it was um, away from the actual carabiners, was looking at the quick draw itself, looking at the webbing. In the case of the Proton, we wanted a slightly softer webbing than we've been using in the past. We wanted a different feel, we wanted to have a a less rigid, less rough feel with this quick draw. But the first times we got were actually quite difficult to sew. So, Richie, one of these, this is the webbing for the Proton. This is one of the first samples we got. The problem was that the webbing was actually too soft. It was um, really, really difficult to sew. When the needle from the sewing machine hits it, it's not penetrating in a rigid enough manner. From there, we changed the webbing slightly, went back to the manufacturer. We've made it slightly more rigid, but at the same time, um, without losing the feel that we wanted to get. As you can see, the stitching's almost perfect. We've got five bar tacks equals about three kilonewtons of bar tack. Before the newly produced webbing can be put into action, it will also need to undergo a testing stage, so it's back to the 10 star testing machine. Just to give people an idea at home, the whole system is good for roughly three tonnes. It's rated for slightly less yeah. because of discrepancies. Yeah, yeah. But what is the most that the biggest, heaviest person could generate in the worst type of fall, a factor two massive fall with some 120 kilo blow, what is the most you think a climber could generate? You're probably looking at something around 1.5 tonnes, okay. not, not a lot more than that. So we're roughly double the strength, there's a factor of two safety if you like. Some so sort there's of plenty misuse. of slack in the system? Exactly, yeah. All right, let's find out exactly how much. Oh. That was quite spectacular. Yeah, so I think it went at 2.1 tonnes um, and you can see the webbing start to fail. I mean this is prototype webbing so okay. we'll, we'll probably look to improve that. Um, but actually the carabiner's broken at a lower rate than it would if you just tested it on its own. So I think if you tested it with two 10 mil, 12 mil pins it went to almost three tonnes, right? Mm -hmm. But because we're loading it differently here you've effectively got the load pulling further away from the spine so you've got a bit of a moment going on here. Okay. So it's not loading the carabiner in it as optimally as it would have done with just the two, the two pins okay, in there. So you've got a lower result. 
as a whole unit than you would expect from just a single carabiner. So these are all the things you've got to take into account? Exactly that, yeah. The crucial thing is the first metal models that come back, they're what give us the clue as to whether we're putting the metal in the right place, whether the shape is correct. Um, so there is a process where you'll get probably four or five iterations. So although they're going to be 95%, they're still never 100%. So you've got to be pretty convinced by the time you get the third or fourth iteration that that is hitting the strengths you want, the weight you want, and is hanging in the way you want it to hang. So I think there's two parts. There's the kind of actual structural bit where you're trying to hit 9 kilonewtons, 28 gate open or whatever you're aiming for, but then sort of the aesthetics, you know, does it handle right, is it, is it the right size, um, and those variants are tweaked in three or four iterations. Check back next week when we take the Proton out on the crag. No. <laughs> And of course, if you like the look of the Proton, you can get your hands on some by going to bananafingers.co.uk. Thanks to the guys at Wild Country. Feel free to send me a sample whenever you like. That's it for this week, but come back on Monday when we've got our coverage of the PLA Door, climbing's Oscars that takes place this weekend in Chamonix. We'll see you then.